Hello and welcome back to another OS tutorial. Today, we've made it. It's time for C at last. I can finally see and the view is great. Had to have that pun in there. What are our topics for today? First of all, we're changing focus for this tutorial. We have a new repository to hold all the code for this tutorial. And we'll get down to business at the end and use C to create our first pass at a kernel. So what's the change of focus? Basically, we're going from me teaching you about how to build an OS to me winging it and showing you what I come up with because I've reached the point where I really can't even pretend to know what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna throw some stuff at the wall, come along for the journey, and if you learn something, we both learn something. That's a bonus. So what about this new repository on GitHub? Here's the link, github.com, Stephen Grice, PKOS, page key operating system. And we'll be using that with the videos. So basically your steps as the watcher, as the viewer, as the learner, would be to watch the video, clone the repository if you haven't already, check out the tag for that video and run the code and there's really only two steps to that it's pretty easy if you have all the dependencies installed you're going to run make and this will build the operating system and then you'll run make run which will use QEMU to actually emulate the execution of that system there's also a make ISO for making an ISO that you can burn and then actually run it on real hardware I tried that this time around and it didn't work out so I'm gonna work on it in a future video maybe we can try that out too so now I'm going to show you how to use that new repository. If you pull up the repository on your browser, you get PKOS. So you have a readme file showing you the videos. Click over to releases and you can see each video has its own release tag. So it gives you a link to the video and all that stuff. And we'll see why once we get into the command line, why this is important. So open up your command line, navigate to the repository, and you can actually do, if you look, you can do a git diff and then one tag and the other tag. So if you're on OS 7, like maybe you were before this video, and now OS 8 comes out and you want to see exactly what changed, all you have to do is go into the repository and, you know, pull down any changes that I pushed out and diff those two changes. And you can see line by line what I changed and how it affected the system. If you want to run code from one of these tags, you just say git check out OS 7 or OS 8 or whatever. Then we'll go through the steps from before um, you'll want to do a make clean to wipe any uh, build files, do a make, it will build the operating system, and then do a make run, and if everything goes well, you should have a little window pop up that is your operating system running in an emulator in QEMU system i386. So let's use our handy tool git diff to see what I changed in this one. First of all, you'll notice that I changed the build process. I changed what make build does. Instead of just building the bootloader, I'm also using GCC to compile our kernel. So the GCC step with the freestanding and all of this extra stuff to make sure that there's no extra libraries or anything included or linked because we're bare metal here. Then we're going to link it and you'll notice capital T text 0x1000 or uh, you know 0x1000. That's basically telling us where to put the entry point to our code. And again, we specify output format binary because we want this to be as bare metal as it gets. Finally, the last part is very brute force. We're literally just catting or, you know, printing the entire file out of boot.bin and kernel.bin into our final bin file. So we're, we're just ramming the two files together, as simple as it could get. Next, I just made some changes to the readme, no big deal. And I removed all of the challenges from before. All of our bootloader challenges, I just deleted them. So if you want them back, you can go back to OS 7 or 6 or wherever they were. Next, we have some changes to our bootloader. First, we have to read the disk so that we can put our entire program that we have so far in memory. We are at such a low level that we really have to do that. We have to take it from the hardware and put it into memory so that we can access. Any other time in your life, you could take it for granted that your program gets loaded into memory before it's executed. In this case, we have to do it ourselves. Once that's done, we get into protected mode like before, very exciting. Instead of printing high in video memory in assembly, we're just going to call kernel offset. And if you look up there, you'll see a familiar number. This kernel offset constant that we've defined is 0x1000, 0x1000. This is the entry point for our compiled C code. So the memory location 0x1000 points to the C program that we just compiled. We'll get to what that C program is in one second. And here it is in all its glory. Nothing but a main method. And we're going to define a character pointer pointing to video memory. 
This is the same thing we were doing in our bootloader. We're just setting bytes in memory to the characters that we want printed to the screen. That is our interface with the hardware. We just have to set the memory location up the right way and the screen will reflect that. For now, that's all we have to do. So we set up that character pointer to 0xB8000 and then I just write a little message. I, I put the O character in, I add two bytes because recall that there are there's two pieces to that video memory. There's the actual character and then there's information about what color it is. So I add two bytes to skip over that color character and then we get to the next actual printed character in line and add an S and then an 8 and then a colon, a space, and then the word kernel by the same method. Here's what it looks like if we clean the directory, build it, and run it. Definitely not too exciting, lots of printing very simple messages to the screen, but you'll see that we really did print that message from our C program to the screen. What's wrong with this? What can we fix down the line? Limitations of this, in my opinion, memory is fragile, and specifying the exact location where the kernel is isn't too reliable because we're locking ourselves into our custom bootloader. I spent a long time trying to fix this and couldn't figure out how, so it'll have to be in the future. But if we want to make this work with something like Grub or a well-established bootloader, I know we're going to have to do a lot more work. <laughs> we can't just tell Grub, hey, go to 0x1000 and just turn over control. There's got to be some other format to it, and I'll let you know when I figure it out. On the same topic, we're kind of diverging courses here. We talked a lot about bootloaders and how to run things on bare metal. But we're finally getting to the point where we can move away from writing a custom bootloader. It was rudimentary, it could be a lot better, but that's really not the focus. We're trying to write the operating system part. So maybe the furthest that we can go is to launch the Linux kernel with a custom bootloader. That would be pretty cool. And really all we need to do to just show that we fully understand the purpose of the bootloader and how to build one. Another huge thing would be to completely move away from our custom bootloader and make our operating system boot using Grub, which would be awesome, because then it's just like any other operating system. Really cool. Again, I don't know too much about either of these yet, but hey, hopefully I'll figure out some more. If you know more about that, let me know. With all that said, that's this video. Thanks for watching, and come back for OS 9. Looking forward to it. Have a good one.